Hey everybody, I'm Jody Gansick. Welcome back to the third out of the fourth episode of this little mini-series here on lighting answers. We've talked about um, light and color. We've talked about how to make it a little dramatic. We've talked about the whys as to why I did what I did with my great room, with my guest bath. We talked a bit about kind of the before and after. We've talked about light and color in terms of objects and paint and fabric and so forth. And now we're going to talk a little bit about colored light itself. And colored light, of course, doesn't always mix well with other things or other people. Let's talk about the last time someone tagged you in a really bad photo on some social media, Facebook, whatever, or Instagram, whatever your, your flavor is. You know, perhaps you were out at the nightclub, unbeknownst to yourself, and uh, you were tagged in a photo. It looks absolutely horrific because, well, let's just face it, colored light on human skin tones doesn't always look the most appealing doesn't always look flattering. Now it can. We know that they've been using colored light in things such as Broadway plays for decades, perhaps almost a century. They've had colored light as long as they could actually put some sort of filter, gel filter, in front of any type of light source. Today we of course can do it through integrated light bulbs, such as uh, the one behind me, which of course looks white now, but of course it's very similar. It is the big brother to this guy, the Philips Hue Bulb. Now this may look to you like, oh, it just looks like one of those funky LED bulbs. Well, what's behind me and behind the actual uh, TV entertainment stand back there is the, the larger version of what I just put in my pocket and that you're not seeing anymore driven by um, their own app, which is not the greatest. So I use, when I'm just manually calibrating these things, I use an app something like this. It allows me to make changes to it, and I can literally just cycle through to greens and yellows, reds, purples, blues, pinks, and so forth. And then somehow try to get back some kind of sense of color and probably just screw it up. Of course you can, you know, of course you can change the intensity go all the way down and as you can see it's pretty much real time it's a neat thing it's very expensive and that's part of why i'm telling it to you uh, and giving you this advice let me um telling it to you doesn't just cut it uh with my home automation system which we'll go into later on in the series uh in another handful of episodes i can simply go back to the episode that i wanted and of course uh, i will lose all the other um lighting because of course it was predefined. So let's just uh, fix that problem. <laughs> this is called recording things and seeing what actually happens. There we go. This is what we have uh, home automation for. It's because it's not quite perfect yet. That's why no, not that many people have it. Anyways, moving on. Um, so colored light, right? Colored light is interesting because it doesn't mix very well with objects that already have a color. Now you're saying, well, that's not right. Isn't white a color? You're wearing white. I could shine some kind of colored light on my shorts and they would show up as the color. That's absolutely true. Colored light, whether it's coming from an LED light source or if you've got some fancy um, lamps and you've got filters on them, whatever it is, you're putting light somewhere and it's already got a color to it. It's not white. So let's take a look at, at this example in the good old the red wall, and you'll see this up close as I change different colors, it doesn't necessarily have the reaction that you would expect. Red on a wall as a paint color plus blue doesn't quite make purple. And red plus yellow doesn't quite make orange either. It's close, but not quite. If you combine a colored light on a white table, well, of course it's going to work correctly because white is basically the combination of all colors. That's how it works in the RGB world, which you may have heard that term around when you're thinking about monitors or whatnot with computers. RGB simply is red, green, blue. You combine them all together and you generally get what is thought of as white. There's a little more science to it than that. 
You may have heard, if you're in the design world or the printing world, you may have heard of something called CMYK, especially if you buy ink for your printer. CMYK, cyan, yellow, magenta, black, K for the black, simply you're combining all these pigments to create colors that are, actual print, that are actually printed, which is similar to paint. Uh, it's not exactly the same thing, but it's pretty close. So combining colored light and objects that are not white doesn't always yield great results. And again, as pale as some human beings from different parts of the world can be, we're not necessarily as pale as a white sheet of paper. So lighting us up at the club and Broadway plays isn't always going to give that perfect, perfect effect like someone might think, but it can be pretty darn close. So now you're thinking, all right, you're talking all this stuff about white light and colored light. We're going to get into color temperature in the next um, iteration of this, the fourth episode. We'll talk about that. So you're saying, all right, you want me to go out and buy these bulbs, right? You're selling them. You got some affiliate program. You want me to, to pick these up at the store. And I'm actually going to say no, unless you just have money to burn. Like you just have, you know, hundred dollar bills coming out of your pocket. These are expensive and I got these myself because I had looked at the technology. I used to do a lot of my own. Uh, I used to be involved in various lighting for some special events and things like that. And uh, so I like this kind of stuff. Obviously I started a lighting series, so I should like it. And I've been disappointed by the Philips uh, bulbs on a number of different levels. Some of their um, some of the colors don't really turn out well. Yellow and green, for example, don't really render all that well in terms of um, being crisp and pure and absolutely beautiful. You, if you look at an LED uh, traffic light signal, that's a green, you can always tell the LEDs because it's an absolutely perfect, perfect color of green. It's not that faded green that are usually um, an incandescent bulb and then they've got a lens in front of it. The LEDs are usually perfect either because the lens has not been um, tainted, it hasn't been burned out, or it's simply they have a perfect LED array in there and it's perfect green. The green is, is fairly okay. The yellow does not render really that well at all. It's not very deep and especially when you bring these down in, in intensity, they just don't render very well at all. And this is about 60, maybe 55% intensity. So these are expensive. To buy the Philips, if you didn't have the Philips bulbs at all, and you wanted to get into this LED color changing game, you're gonna spend $200 on the starter kit because you've gotta get three of the bulbs out of three of these you know, traditional type um, A bulbs, A19 as the shape is called, regular you know, Edison screw. Um, or you get the floodlight type, which I've shown kind of before in terms of the, uh, the Cree version or some other version I'm sure that I've shown it, which is what is behind there. And then you have to get a little in-between device. You have to get a hub uh, and it speaks multiple languages, not like, you know, French, uh, French and English or Spanish or something like that. No, it talks uh, to, the, it actually has the language to talk to the light bulbs and then it has the Wi-Fi language to talk to your smartphone, talk to the internet, what have you. But at the end of the day, it's expensive, an expensive proposition to get into at this point. There is another competitor out there. I wouldn't be good if I didn't mention them. It's called LifeX. LifeX is interesting because all the technology is in the bulb, uh, where with Philips, most of it is in the bulb. With LifeX, you can buy the bulbs separately. So you could buy one bulb. Of course, guess how much one bulb is? A hundred dollars. Oh yeah. I, I'm not even going to buy it. I might buy it if we have enough backers of this show and they you know, send us in those uh, donations via Patreon and then I can test one out. The differences between the two, and, and I'll, I'll also uh, let you know that the individual bulbs for Philips, once you get the kit, you can buy these for, you know, a measly $60 each, but still it's really expensive. Um, so the, here's the differences. Like I said, some of the colors are not rendered very well by the Philips. They're rendered a bit better by the uh, LifeX bulb, and that's L-I-F-X. We'll probably have it on the bottom of the screen, like there or somewhere. Um, their color rendering is a bit better in terms of the LED colors, uh, and if you need more brightness with a the color, they actually add white LEDs that'll turn on as well. Uh, the dimmability is 
they're kind of okay on both of them. We'll go into more of that a little bit later. But colored light, as as we kind of get back to it, I wanted to kind of, this was a little bit of, of a product thing in terms of just showing you what's out there. There's going to be more competitors out there. The price is going to drop if you really want to convert your whole place to colored light, which I really do not recommend. In fact, one of the other things that I went through, I went through my own design process because I thought about, well, what if I, I did a number of these bulbs? What if I put a number of these Philips floods in a number of these can lights that I use? Because I do a lot of uplighting um, because it's a softer way to light versus having direct downlights or harsh things. You'll see that I have a, a light kit on the fan. I don't even use it because I don't like that weird harsh light. I like to control it in so many ways and I'll talk more about that in a future episode about controlling light, up light versus down light versus so many different ways of lighting a room. But at the end of the day, it's colored light is better as accent light. And that goes back to the old saying, you know, the old nightclub thing or the old, uh, you know, if you're in a Broadway play and you've got these funky colors put on you and your friends are taking pictures of you or the photographer is taking pictures for the local magazine and you're going to be famous and you look horrible because it's an awful color that they've got on you. But it worked for the play, but it didn't work for the photo. So accent, 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 always with color, just like I've done um, with just doing two walls and not the entire room. The same thing with the blue bath. The blue guest bath has accents, accents, accents that add up to something grand. Now, like you saw at the very beginning, I can of course change the entire room. In fact, let's, um, in fact, let's do that right now just for fun. You'll see that you get an interesting effect. Um, let's see here. This is just live off the cuff. I just came up with this idea. Didn't even plan it. So I'm just going to bring everything off and we are going to then show you um, a cool sort of dramatic effect. Not super dramatic, but this is, uh, let's go to dark. Medium mode dark. So you'll see, uh, happens to be the color of the day is, happens to be red. How imaginative was that? So you'll see actually behind me, of course, is the corner is being lit by a color. That color changes daily. I have something set that kind of just automatically chooses a new one if I happen to light up the Philips light back there as part of a scene. And of course I can make it a little bit brighter if I'm going to be in a, in a you know, media watching setting that I need a little bit more light to do something like eat popcorn or whatnot. Um, and you'll see that it came up a little bit more. And then of course if we go back to our uh, scene here that is sort of the studio scene then uh, it will turn back to white and uh, I can actually uh, bring this down and then bring this guy back up so I can actually see. There we go. Uh, so anyways, you can get some dramatic effect. You can change the look of a room. You can adjust things with just some accent light and not overdoing it with a whole bunch of lights. I was going to do that. I decided against it, obviously, because I already had a feature wall that was going to be a color. So there's no reason to throw even more colored light at it. You want to put it somewhere else where it is an accent. Accent, accent, accent. The other place I've done colored light is in my office space or sort of my design studio as I call it. I'll show you just a portion of this room and this is sort of, yes, I am a self admittedly sort of a sci-fi guy and I like trains and transportation and things like that. So this kind of creates an elegant, really cool backdrop. And again, this color changes on a daily basis as well. So it's a nice blue. Accent, accent, accent for colored light. I cannot state that anymore. And if there was anything else on my notes, well, I'm not cheating and I'm telling you everything that I wanted to put in this little mini episode. So we've gotten to the, to the, episode, to the end of the third in the mini series. And that's about it. So don't forget to support us on Patreon. We love it. Uh, we could go out there and buy some uh, bulbs to compare this guy to, the good old um, Lifex. So that's how you help us uh, support things that things are gonna fall off the countertop. So you don't even know why uh, we're, never mind. Anyway, support us on Patreon. There's the information there. It's kind of like a Kickstarter for ongoing projects. And uh, it's a really great way. And we really love your support. And then it's a fully fan-driven uh, viewer supported series, which is awesome. And speaking of your support and your questions, uh, send us an email, send me, I guess, send me and the team, me, myself, and I, at the team, uh, an email at questions at answers.lighting uh, with your questions, comments, 
hate mail, love mail, whatever you have uh, for us, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can, or on a next show. There's all the stuff, the social media, you can find us on YouTube and all the different places. And uh, coming up is the fourth and final episode. We're going to talk about color temperature. That's another thing that I'll talk about with these guys. Uh, I guess it's something that people hear about and they're like, color temperature, does it mean like how hot it is if I put my hand on it and I burn myself? No, it's not. So that's in uh, the fourth part of our mini series. And after that, we'll get into we're kind of go back to more general lighting. We'll talk more about some specialty LED bulbs. We'll talk about kind of what I do with this up lighting thing and why you should use it. And then it'll be time to start talking about home automation and the Internet of Things, coinciding with potentially a big announcement from a very large computer and electronics company, personal electronics company that's out there that may happen in September that people might be looking forward to. So uh, we'll be looking for announcements from Apple and Google and all that stuff. It's going to be huge, I think, as we go into the future. So speaking of the future, well, um, I'm Jody Ganzik and I've been giving you lighting answers and I'll see you next time on episode four of this little mini series on light and color. I'll see you next time.